is lesson 9 on simple harmonic motion this is for year 13 physics and this lesson is on natural frequency and i'm going to explain about the spring as well as the simple pendulum in this lesson so what is natural frequency any system that is free to move back and forth in simple harmonic motion will have a natural frequency at which it will vibrate now we have seen that for simple harmonic motion, your acceleration is actually negative omega squared y. That means, and it is the res restoring force that is responsible for simple harmonic motion as that is the unbalanced force and your restoring force is F equals ma. Now for this equation, if you substitute for acceleration with this one, you get F is in place of A, you get omega squared Y. Now, let's look at the spring. For a mass on a spring, we know that F is negative KY, and, but F, we just found out, is actually M omega squared Y. So when you equate both these, you end up with Y is the same on both sides. You get M omega squared is K, or omega squared is K over M, or omega is square root of k over m. We know that omega is 2 pi over t. So in other words, 2 pi over t is k over m. Or if you make t the subject of the formula, you have 2 pi is m over k. Where t is the period in seconds, m is the mass in kilograms, and k is the spring constant in newtons per meter. Now this is the equation for the period of a mass bouncing at the end of a spring this equation tells us that period depends only on the mass and the spring constant k stiffer springs have a larger value of k if the mass increases the period increases since t is directly proportional to square root of m for a stiffer spring if k increases then the period will decrease since t is inversely proportional to the square root of k what does this mean the period decreases that means it will take less time for one oscillation moving on to the pendulum a pendulum can only be considered to be an example of shm if the angle of oscillation is small less than 10 degrees so that its path is approximately in a straight line because if you swing a pendulum through large angles that's what's going to happen. It's going to describe an arc of a circle. So if you look over here, this is the mass of the pendulum. And you look at the forces acting on the mass. You've got the tension force going upwards. And you've got your gravity force going downwards. If you resolve the gravity force into its components, you have one of them which is actually kind of balances out the tension force and your only unbalanced force is this one okay so you get m so you have f your unbalanced force is mg sine theta but we also know that f is equal to m omega squared y so and for very small angles where sine theta is almost theta in radians, it is equal to y over l, this theta. Okay, so I've done, so mg, and instead of sine theta, you've got y over l is equal to m omega squared y. You get the m and the y cancel off, and you get omega squared is g over l, omega is square root g over l. We know omega is 2 pi over t, so you get t is 2 pi square root of l over g. So this equation tells us that the period T of a pendulum depends only on the length of the pendulum. Longer the length, the more time it takes to complete an oscillation. And the length of the pendulum is actually from the point of suspension to the center of mass of the bob. It's not till the bottom, it's not till the top, it's a center of mass.